Gather around, boys and girls. It's story time. Now, listen carefully, because there's a moral to this story that I will be asking you about afterwards. Okay? Here we go. It's 3 p.m., and little Jessica Parker comes home from school, as she always does. Her mother notices that she looks dizzy and red-faced, and, like the good mother that she is, she immediately asks if she's ill. No, Jessica answers. It's just that the teacher makes us sit in class upside down. Her mother's quite puzzled at this explanation. What? But why would she do that? She says it helps us learn more by letting the knowledge flow into our heads more easily. Jessica's mother was naturally quite concerned about this, so she went to see the teacher the next chance she got. Her teacher was only too happy to address her concerns. Oh yes, she says. I think it'll make the children learn much more this way. But it doesn't make any sense, Jessica's mother replies. Sitting upside down doesn't make you learn more. That's just silly. The teacher was shocked at this answer. What's wrong? Don't you want the children to learn? Well, of course I do, Jessica's mother answers. I just don't think this is going to help. Well, can you prove it doesn't, the teacher demands. Jessica's mother is silent. It seems the teacher has her there. Surely, if there's any chance to help the children learn more, it should be taken, right? And no one would argue against such noble goals, right? And so it was that schools all through the land would begin teaching children sitting upside down. In time, a golden age of enlightenment was sure to follow. Now, boys and girls, ask yourself this. Is this how you want the world to work? Do you think it's wise to judge ideas based on intentions and not based on evidence? One of the most common arguments used against proponents of freedom, such as myself, goes something like this. Prove that your pro-freedom view is the truth. Go on, show me the proof or be silent. If you try to explain that this is an unintelligent and unrealistic demand, you won't even finish the sentence before they guffaw in triumph, saying, Aha! So you have no proof. You are close-minded. You are dogmatic. You are irrational. This is an argument based on highly flawed thinking. The idea that the skeptical view must supply proof in equal measures to that of the claimant. When they see skeptics demand proof for their absurd claims, they think that they can simply flip the argument around that easily. To fail to understand the difference between the skeptic and the claimant is a sign of either ignorance or dishonesty. In most cases, it's later in my experience. In a truly free country, if you think sitting upside down will help you learn, by all means, please do so. But the claim that your way is a universal truth that all must embrace is quite extraordinary, and all extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. The skeptic saying it's not so doesn't need to prove that position. Only be prepared to accept proof if it is given. I cannot prove that seizures are not caused by demonic possession and that exorcism is the way to cure them. No, I cannot prove that is not so at all. But is that a valid justification to replace all our neurologists with priests? I cannot prove that a tyrannical state cannot exist peacefully. But is that justification to cast aside all our rights and submit? Think well about my words today, boys and girls. Never allow ideas to be forced on you without the common courtesy of allowing you to question them and come to your own conclusions about what is the truth. And never assume your ideas to be infallible either. Science and reason is all about awaiting the day that your idea is proven wrong, and that's why it works. That is one truth you can always count on. Until next time, be aware and be wise.